Good Monday morning! Today we are going to talk about the optional chaining operator in JavaScript. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Functions. So what does this optional chaining operator look like? Let's have a look at that first. All right, so we have an object here called user, uh, which has one property called name, and that is Fluffykins. And uh, here we are assign creating a variable called the zip code and here we are kind of trying to access a property that does not exist on the user and address and then we in turn we're trying to access an, uh, another property that does not exist on the non-existent object called zip code. So let's say that we have users that some of them have names, some of them also have addresses. And if we use the optional chaining operator, uh, this means that uh, zip code here would be undefined. And if we didn't have this, if we didn't have this, didn't use that, then uh, this code would actually uh, immediately break. Let's see. Let me actually just uh, execute that. Quokka start on current file. Uh, there we go. And you see that cannot read property zip of undefined. Now, you might notice here that uh, these go red, and that is because uh, unless you're watching this from the future, uh, this does not exist in JavaScript quite yet. The optional chaining operator is a uh, proposal for JavaScript. It's at stage one, and there are four stages. However, I do think that this is likely to be implemented because it's an obviously useful feature. Uh, it already exists in C-sharp. Also, you can use this already today using Babel. And you can find a link to how to do that in the episode description. Unless you're watching this from the future. All right, so why does this exist? What's the point of this? All right, so let's think about the problem here. We have we need to access the uh, zip code of our users, uh, but the problem is that some users don't have uh, an address, which means that we get these uh, the cannot read property zip of undefined errors. Oh, can I make an interesting observation here? This problem only exists because in JavaScript and many languages, variables and properties can be uh, null or undefined or nil or whatever you, you would like to call them. They can be like set to point to nothing. And that is what creates problems like this. Uh, and languages like uh, Rust, for example, does completely away with the concept of null in order to avoid these kinds of problems. Sure, but JavaScript does have this problem, so we need to deal with it somehow. All right, um, maybe we can solve it with a logic expression. Ta-da! Fine, that works, but it, like you see, it's 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 very noisy. It's it's very verbose. Mm, that's true. Maybe we could do a nested ternary. What? No! Wow! Here we go. Oh, I think this is a great example of why nested ternary operators are so hard to read. I just look at this and I just feel the ulcer growing in my stomach. Hey, no problem. Let's solve it with a try catch block. I think this is also very noisy. Uh, it has, it, it also has its own scopes. So we have to do this uh, weird mutable variable here. We can't use const anymore. 
Also, let's delete this comment here. We don't need that now that we're using Quokka. Oh, I know what we could do. Please don't write a li- I'll write a library! wasn't too much code actually. Oh, for the love. Oh, and using recursion always makes me feel so smart. Literally thousands of years of developer time must have been wasted on writing this function. Fine, I'll use a third party library. Ramda, it's such a nice library. I feel like it's weird that the syntax here is reversed from the function that we wrote earlier. Um, like the properties come first and they come as an array and the second argument here is the, the object. Why, why is it like that? Oh, the benefit of that is that it allows us to carry it with Ramda. Hang on, I'll show you. So you see here that we can reuse get zip in, in uh, multiple places in our app because of the, the, the currying. Fine, but wouldn't it be cool if something like Ramda path was built into the language? Yes! Okay, so apart from the fact that this does not exist yet, I think that this is a really uh, nice solution. Uh, it's a lot shorter than uh, all the other solution, including uh, the little library that we wrote just to solve this problem. Yeah, but is it really all that much shorter? Mm, it's shorter, but we're still talking about introducing a whole new language feature here. If we add a new language feature for every little thing that we want to solve in JavaScript, we, we're going to end up with a language that has a very steep learning curve. One of the nicest things about JavaScript is that there aren't too many language constructs to learn. Is the optional chaining operator a useful feature that is worth the complexity it adds to the language? Or is it just cuddling with the C-sharp developers? Post a comment down below, or if you are a patron, you can check out the dedicated discussion topic for this episode on the Fun Fun Forum right here, or in the link in the episode description. If you are new, welcome. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you are forgetful, you can subscribe here so that you don't miss it. Or you can check out another episode right now by clicking here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay tuned.